Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, welcome you to the Sylvester Hall Board of Education meeting, April 20, 2015. Thank you all for coming. Uh, Susan, we'll take the seven minutes. Yes. Uh, Valerie Anderson. Here. Tony Mazzini. Here. Alan Brown. Here. Gregory Cava. Here. Michelle Flora. James He's here. here. Emily Hibbert, yes, James Hershey, yes. Kelly Lux, Jennifer Cody, here, Michael Sinatra, here. I am here, Peter Tadley, here. All right, thank you. So everyone's here except the public. Public comment on agenda items. Does anyone like to address the board on anything on the agenda? All right, seeing no one then, I'll move on to the consent agenda. Is there anyone who wants to remove any item from the consent agenda? See known in the consent agenda is approved. Number four, uh, mobile app design and CAD for career technology education presentation. Sheila Gambino. Sheila, welcome. Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I just want to give a little intro because you are going to hear from Sheila Gambino, and she's going to talk about a new high school course, mobile app design. And she does have a student here with her be excited to hear about um, what we're doing at the high school. In addition, you're going to hear from Karen Carpenter, who is a new teacher here this year. And she's going to talk about an exciting project um, that the students created um, using CAD. So I'm going to turn it over to Sheila. I'm sorry if I may, just for those who, anyone who may be unaware, CAD is computer-aided drafting, is that right? It is. That is correct. Fine. Yes. So Sorry. we're very proud to present the mobile app design course to you um, tonight. It's a new class this year, and it's part of the Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences. Um, we work as an independent entity, which means we present our own app instead of working with the science classes to um, develop an app for them. So the students have a lot of creative freedom, <coughs> and they work with the Chicago Learner Outcomes, engaging in the creative process and solving problems. And one of our students isn't here. I've been hoping that he'll show up any minute. But I just want to say how proud I am of these two incredible students. They worked really hard, really since eighth grade in programming. And Sean Walsh, who is sitting right back here, he's he's wanted to be in technology since he was in second grade, and he learned a little bit about HTML from his sister. But he was a little bit confused. So you know, time went on, and in sixth grade, he learned a little bit of Objective C, and he was, his interest was piqued again. And now he's in the mobile app design class, and he's decided technology is really what he wants to do. This is what he's moving with it. He's going forward with it. He wants to be a programmer. So um, without further ado, I'll just invite Sean. Thank you. And here is Jared Martin, who I'm also extremely proud of who decided that he wanted to be a programmer in 8th grade Project Lead the Way class as he was learning about robotics and automation. And then he attended our summer enrichment program where we did some mobile app design in the summer enrichment program. So he decided at that point in time that that's when he wanted to become a programmer. And he is also moving straight ahead forward with it.
personal app that I made for the class was a uh, better days, which I described as a calendar of wacky, crazy holidays that you can celebrate any day of the year. Uh, not only does it display the holiday, but if you tap the image, it brings you to a link that tells you a little bit about the history of the holiday or why it's important. We also have an alarm screen where you can set a specific works is you have four buttons for the top where you can select month, day, year, and then set. When you hit set, that sets a little label under it to the date that you want the alarm to go up. And when that label and the label at the top of the screen, which is the current date, match, it sets off the alarm, which will play a sound and send you a notification. And then this is the social media screen. On the far left, code. So you have a little text box, you can type in your message, you choose a contact, and you can hit send and it'll send the message to your contact. You got the tweet button. So you type in your tweet, you're already logged in, you hit the button and it posts the tweet to your Twitter. And then you also have in the middle the Facebook button. Other words, what 
this does is it just counts the seconds that the app has been running. And just like in the app that I was showing before, it gets the uh, longitude and latitude and altitude. And this is useful for determining speed. It's the same thing as before, but it's just in text form instead of block form. And so while what we, we may be doing is complicated and complex, that's not what everyone's doing. Because we have an expo in about a month and a half, we have split the class into three separate teams. John and I are the programming department. We have a graphic design department who's in charge of creating logos and posters and, you know, what you would see advertisements. And we also have the marketing team, which is in charge of social media, the website, the blog, uh, directing Jared, do you know what, what uh, happens on your app on September twenty uh, September nineteenth? Uh, not quite yet. We'll, we'll it's still look. a work in progress. I'm trying to build a larger database to kind of have full chrome so that it doesn't just display one holiday. It will display every all of them for every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sheila, X, Xcode looks a lot like XML. Is it? Is it? Um, uh, no, it's not related? really like XML. It's really its own entity. It's, um, it's, a, it's its own animal. Oh, okay, some of the way that the variables are defined. So it's not an easy transition, is it? Not an easy transition. Okay. So in my opinion, it's one of the hardest languages. Maybe they uh, did that on purpose. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So we're going to pass around the GPS location just so you can see like what it would look like. And pass around the better data. Hmm. Um, in your, your managerial approach, do you have a legal department? I mean, because I think you should be applying for copyrights and patents, absolutely things like that. How can you do 
that. And I think you should. More colorful work. I believe once Sean and I work further with the farmers, once we have finished products that we feel are ready to go out to the market, we'll try to plug it out here. Excellent. That in itself is going to be a great program. We, next year, we are offering an introduction to computer programming, so which will get students college ready to go into it. Thank you very much, John and Jerry. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Sheila, thank you. Very exciting stuff. So next up, our next speaker will be to speak Karen Carpenter. And she is a technology teacher, mostly at the high school level. And she teaches um, some CAD classes and also has a little thing to get to share with you about a new another new class that we have, which is architecture. Hello everybody. Hi. I'm Karen Carpenter and I am new to Chicago. I am new to teaching. For the last 29 years I've been a mother of five and running an architectural engineering firm. And I decided that after I got my kids off to college, it was time for me to get back and share my experience with the students. So I'm thrilled to be here and teaching the students here at Chicago and um, teaching a lot of different courses and learning a lot at the same process time. Um, Kim had asked me to look at the design of the teacher's work area. And so I had the students go in there, and this is some pictures of what it looks like um, when they walked in. And they found that um, it hadn't been designed, organized, or really looked at for quite a few years. And I had them go through a design process that I would go through as an architect to redesign the space. And it starts off with interviewing the um, teachers who use the space. It has them looking at how the space is used just by watching it. And then they had to create a program. And by creating a program, they had to take the information that they gathered from the teachers and administration and look at the new products that are available today and come up with a design that they thought would be an improvement. And so we started off doing an existing floor plan. They measured it up and showed what was there already. Karen, yep. maybe you could just show the audience what you're showing. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> this is the existing floor plan. Show the resource. Show okay. plan and So they, one of the things that the teachers asked for was to be able to, during the lunch hour, to give exams to the students. But they wanted 
there's not a lot of space in there, so they wanted to be able to have this room where they could watch the kids take exam, but they wanted it quiet while it was their writing the exam and not have the people eating lunch disturb them. But they also wanted that room to double in case they needed to have a private conversation with a student or a parent later on. And they discovered um, a product called Smart Glass, which is used in hospitals and hotel rooms. And it so it would be a glass wall around it. And then when they flipped a switch, it would go to being um, opaque so that you couldn't see through it. So you can, and it's just a matter of gases in between the glass that would allow it to double up in whichever way. Um, they use it a lot in um, ORs in case so if there's a surgery going on and they want the residences not to have germs in there so they can turn it on and off and it's also used in hotels. But so I thought that was creative research on their part. And they researched different um, furniture to, that would go into be used in there. And they made a list of all the things that the teachers had said they wanted to have in there. When they came, I had, I, you know, I must say, I had two different CAD classes working on this, so I had two different designs. I only brought one of them for you today. Um, but they came up with a whole new design, and I don't know if you guys have ever been in the teacher's work area, but um, there's the different departments, and so we were trying to make it, you know, not so closed different departments, having the ability to have it more open and bring in technology. So we thought if we could have, um, a large area where they could all eat lunch together and have a big flat screen TV where they could do technology workshops and have a chance to make their group more cohesive instead of the smaller departments if they wanted to, but they would also have the options of having their small departments through the um, new kinds of seating. And they also needed, so this is where they could have the lunch area all together and also just have a lounge where they could be you know, more comfortable to sit there and watch you know, the screen for the tech um, workshops. Or maybe we could just have announcements on there who's, whose birthday it is, this, you know, with teachers, just to make it more of a community, sense of community. And then this is the room where they have the smart glass that they could turn the, um, the visibility of the, you know, the room open and close. And also there have been complaints about the bathroom situation there. There are currently more female teachers in the school than males, and so they thought they should have more room in the female area in the bathroom. So they came up with the idea of switching the bathrooms. And also, there has been issues with the doors opening directly into the teacher's work area, which made it a little less desirable to eat right in front of the bathroom door. So they decided to put up a screen there and then switch this bathroom door around to be off the back and also have a place for the coats. And we also had them measure up all the books, like some of the departments have books scattered throughout the school. So they measured up all the books that were scattered throughout the school and figured out a way to get all the books all in one area. So they lined all the walls and figured out the lineal footage of books that they needed to be able to get all the books there in the same spot um, and accomplish to have everything together, but have it in a more organized fashion. So this was just them going through and taking the information and learning the design process. And I had some other students, one was working on, um, on the CAD who was using um, figuring out how to make an artificial heart. Um, some were doing guitars, some were doing race cars. So I had them drawing things that they were passionate about. Um, and then one of the other classes I'm also taught this past semester was um, architecture, which is something near and dear to my heart. I had the students first learn how to draw um, by hand, and then I had them go to doing it on the computers while using software which they had used here, which is what the industry uses, which is AutoCAD. I um, mean, by Autodesk, and I was able to get a three-year free um, subscription to that so that they could all learn that. They learned how to draw the house that they had just drawn by hand on the computer, and then they um, went to designing their own house. So this was just quickly one of the houses that one of the students had um, designed and um, just brought it along to show you some of the work that they were doing in the architecture um, class as well. Does anybody have any questions? So Yes, I would love to teach you. <laughs> May I help you? Um, is it possible for your students to design the improvement to the mall? And then maybe we could start throwing some numbers together so we could just do it ourselves? Yeah. I would love, I've also had a request for them to redo the library. Um, and so um, 
I think personally from where I'm coming from as an architect, I want them to work on something that has meaning to them. And so I think the mall would be great. I actually, we, one of the ideas we came up with was to take the planetarium and make it into a Chicago box where you could have it a, a culinary and a business class where they could be teaching and make it into a place to serve food there. I mean, I was having them brainstorm all different kinds of ideas, and then that money would go into making like a senior lounge. And, but we had so much fun looking at the mall and just talking about different projects around the school and how could we make things um, improve them around here because things haven't been improved for a while. But yes, to answer your question. Welcome, Ms. Carpenter. Welcome. I hear your enthusiasm, and Thank you. I love it. I think that is fantastic, just to go from that to even the concept of, of how they wrote things, how they wrote things out. You know, useful spaces. That's. Um, I, I think that is uh, that's the best application of, of from what you learn in the classroom to real hands on. Well, they want to do the project too, just to let you know. Oh, for sure, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Project part. Does, do you feel that um, pricing it out and putting together a proposal fits with your class? Most well, definitely. Because I think they should propose. I think they should mm -hmm. present it to us, and I think we should fund it. <laughs> but we just worked on the budget. But but anyway, I think that would be a valuable like sort of conclusion to that, and I think it would be really obviously not everything that comes before us could see funded. But I think there clearly that's an area that needs help, and we recognize that. And so I, I w that would be kind of a fun. Well, I was to teaching the students, you know, the happy wife, happy life, you know, concept. I said if your teachers are working cohesively and you know pulling together, and that they the trickle down effect would affect them, and that this was really in their best interest, and they became very passionate about it. And Kim has actually asked me to put together. Um, budget prices on it and I have every intention of doing just been a little busy with a few other things lately but um yes that is on my to-do list and I will do it personally I also came up with my own design um, but I would like to be able to do that in a future CAD class. Okay. Two things. I, I would one I would suggest that if this is going to go anywhere that you have a meeting with an expert director of facilities because he was the person to see it. Okay excellent because uh, he, he's the one that has to deal with it. Uh, and maintain it, so that's good. The second thing is, are, are you going to give them any training? If, if, if we do a project like this, are they going to get any training in the contract administration piece of what it means to be an architect? Well, you know, I take 40 Although they're kids. Although they're not licensed, so they can't. No. Well, I take 40 kids to uh, West Virginia to teach construction every summer, and so I'm used to, you know, teaching kids on the construction site, and I would, you know, certainly I've been walking them through step by step, and I would love to take them through those different levels and um, give them the opportunity. Excellent. What? So you're teaching? What classes are you teaching? The CAD and a. I teach CAD architecture, architectural framing, woodworking, photography in wood, and um, architectural framing and graphic design. Wow. So so wood, so you're in the wood shop. Well, Currently, I'm teaching, yeah, woodworking. So They're making Civil War chairs and uh, cherry and walnut boxes right now. I want to take all your classes. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Uh, Sheila uh, had mentioned uh, you discussing possibly a new course. Did, you, did I miss that? Um, the architecture course, um, I'm, the CAD's new in the sense that I'm bringing in different software. The architecture, I mean, I'm teaching the architecture framing, which wasn't there before, and the graphic design is new as well. Did you find that these courses have sufficient student interest? Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I gear it towards where their interests are. Like when I started off teaching the CAD, I wanted to know what they were, so I did a, um, a unit on career, technical careers, and so I found where each of them, so I tied the CAD into where their interests were. And I used the different software for that particular maybe it was more manufacturing um, because I wanted it to be towards their interest. And I'm sure that interest will change from year to year as different students come through here. But you know, even within construction, you know, whether I'm doing furniture making or, you know,
construction manager tomorrow. I'm doing a career fair as the construction architect. Mm -hmm. um, there's just it's such a wide range. I also have a degree in civil engineering, so I can you know go off into the engineering part of it. I can go into the architecture part of it. Um, construction. There's so many different facets of construction we go into, and we're rebuilding our hall infrastructure in this country right now. So, and if we're not, we need to be. And um, so I think it's a wide range of possibilities for careers for the students to move into. Else? No, no I'm, just, I'm just gasping with appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have an eighth grader, but I think it's signed up for something. I just didn't know about it. Well, thank you very much. Thank well, you. Great work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. signed a memorandum of understanding between Region 12 Board of Ed and the Chapag Valley Administrators Association, <clears throat> recognizing Lori Ferreira as being identified as an associate principal for as long as Lori Ferreira serves in this position. When Lori Ferreira no longer serves in this position and the position needs to be filled, it will, be, it will revert to and be known as the assistant principal position, which is the position identified in the current contract. So Lori Ferreira, I think her official title now is Associate Principal. Congratulations to her. All right, that's all I have. Uh, Superintendent's report. Yes, I have a couple of things to share. First of all, board members, um, one of our Chapag alum, who we're going to put a spotlight on, daughter of Val, is the New York Times bestseller number one for residents inside the part of the world of the White House. Okay, so very First book, I have it. I haven't read it yet, so I just got a guest today. But um, uh, really excited. I think it's a wonderful, um, wonderful thing as a mom. Can, and I, can I just yes. interrupt for a minute because yes. we're in the process of cleaning out our stuff from the basement and everything and I came across Kate's original senior project <clears throat> you know the great big board and the whole thing and it was about working for the Waterbury Republican newspaper developing stories ideas to features to editing to publication and I thought you know this was I mean she's had other influences but this was really key to see your name in print, to know what it's like to be a journalist, to check your sources, to go on interviews with sources. And so I, I think it kind of started there, too. That's wonderful. See your project. Congratulations. Thank you. And then we have our chairman here, who was named by the Litchfield County Bar Association uh, as uh, receiving the Honorable Anthony B. DeMeo Pro Bono Award for his devotion to pro bono work. So he is all for that. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm just correcting my name. It was the Connecticut Bar oh. Association. Oh, excuse Not me. Not the Lichuk Bar Association. Connecticut, even bigger. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, congratulations. Very nice. I'm just going to put this over. Yes. Very nice. Uh, and then to continue, we have uh, two field trips that already took place. But we just want to let you know because they were a little bit uh, further than normal. Um, Agri-science application, just so you know, um, we are still in it. Uh, our um, two bills are in the construction bill uh, area. School construction, which is a good place to be. Um, I will call Art O'Neill tomorrow just to let him know, you know, that we're, let us know if we need to do anything and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, we went today, um, Kim Gallo, um, Charlie Booz, and two of his um, people from his office and myself went to Region 14 to get a handle on exactly um, 
what um, we're doing and getting you know a real picture in our head. So that was very very um, exciting. We do have some um, drawings that um, the facilities committee saw tonight, and we'll maybe share at the next meeting. Um, and we're going to share them. They are just draft drawings uh, with our ad road show, which is a Mrs. Gallup calls it. Just easy rolls off the tongue there, but we're going to Roxbury on Thursday evening, 7:30. We're going to Bridgewater May 11th, and Washington is still um, choosing a date. And so we're going to start to talk about the science labs, the ag for science program, etc. So it's a lot of things are going on. Very exciting. The other thing with the board calendar, um, I had Debbie. <coughs> just give you an update and I really, you know, it's really the July and August dates. I had already given you dates in June and I changed July 13th to July 20th and then we have, um, we had the 17th and the 31st already scheduled. Uh, 17th as a retreat, which I think would be a good thing, especially if we have some new board members. And then it's the 31st. I had made a mistake in the email. I wrote the 20th. So I think this is really important. We will not. We'll ha definitely have the 20th meeting. Um, and the other meetings will play by ear. But I wanted everybody to really um, make sure that you put that time in because if we're going to have a vote on September 15th, we're going to need to do some work in the summer. And we're still working on that calendar, so I don't really have an exact calendar of all the dates, etc. But I did want you to have that. And I think that is it, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. I just want to say with regard to our application pending before the legislature, I'm glad that it's not in the Judiciary Committee since one legislature would not legislate or would not appropriately apologize to the other. The whole thing died. Everything before the Judiciary Committee is done. So it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. The whole, all, all the bills. Right. Yeah. Well, okay, so that's not us. Good. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Michael. Just uh, speaking of honors, Pat, I was wondering if you could let us know a little bit about the honor that you just received. It was a, a three or four year term, I think. Yes, a three year term. I, this is my third time I ran. I lost the first two times, so perseverance counts. What is this? This is the AASA governing board. So AASA is the American Association of Superintendents and uh, represents the 50 states and different areas, um, Canada and uh, Puerto Rico, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, Conventions in Puerto Rico? <laughs> Conventions in Puerto Rico? No, think. it's not in Puerto Rico. <laughs> it's not in the winter, maybe? No, so anyway. Uh, Dakota, probably. Anyway, so each state has a certain amount of, and I, it was weird, because some states have one, some states have two, three. I don't know how that works, because it didn't really look like population. But we have three seats in Connecticut, and I, I won. I ran on girl power and um, being a good role model for um, youth, and the third time was a charm. So I'm very excited. I have to, in uh, July, go to Washington for three days, which they pay for, um, and you uh, meet with the group, you meet with the legislatures. Um, I guess we, I don't really know exactly everything we do, but it's really, you know, each organization has different vision and mission and what you're going to work on so i'm assuming it's a lot of that and then you have to go um to the february conference which i usually go to anyway um and um then you do some voting and different things so i think it's great i think it's wonderful uh, one of my goals is to get region 12 on the map let everybody know across you know the country how wonderful we are starting with the area and where working our way. So I'm excited about it. I think it'll be a good thing. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for bringing that up. I, thought I, like to, I, met, I intended to mention it during my report to the chair, and I haven't forgotten. So thank you for bringing that up. Very exciting for Pat and for us. All right, item seven, to consider and if appropriate approve Ed Specs for science labs. Is this Mr. Prada? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move uh, that we approve the ed specs as presented. I believe they've been presented to every one of their materials. And uh, the evening, the facilities committee uh, has uh, reviewed these, discussed them, and uh, voted uh, unanimously to present them to the board with our recommendation for approval. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right, so move and second. Is there any discussion? 
Sure. Um, I had a couple of questions as I was reading through them. I'm assuming that the science department and the faculty was consulted on making sure that the specs meet all of their yes. requirements. Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, I think that there was a, there there have been some design changes to the plan based on. I'm not mistaken, based on the faculty's desire, it's a little bit different configuration the way the lab stations are are configured, and uh, I know that was critical to them. Uh, and it's funny because I was on that that tech floor of Chicago, and we had that discussion with uh, with one of the science teachers. So it was, it was a good thing. So yeah, good. They okay. have that. Great, thanks. The, uh, my only other question was um, as I was. I, I don't know exactly how this all worked and the timing of these aspects, but I saw that the enrollment data, and I remember in the facilities committee last month, I think it was, when we were looking at the number of labs required, we were sort of we sort of had the agri-science program in the back of our head, but that hasn't been approved. But then we'll hear about that in June. So will those numbers then get tacked in here since they're going to referendum at the same time? We had that discussion tonight, actually, and uh, we we are we can't do it yet, of course. Right. But but, sh but sh should the timing work out, then those population numbers would also be included. Yes, that would be the idea. Okay. But but th th this is pretty much what it would be. I mean, a lot of things in here seem very bureaucratic and pedantic and whatnot. But it, it's the kind of stuff that has to be in the aspects when we go to the state for a project uh, reimbursement. There's a lot of things in here that are. Uh, that they're, they're are critical for the state to see in order to make sure that this is a viable project and we can go forward on. So even though for us it seems like, you know, why this level of detail is, you're speaking to Harvard. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Yeah, that was my question too as far as the um, capacity. And I know I sat in on one of your meetings, the Long Beach Planning Committee sat in <laughs> to learn more about this. Um, and I'm, I'm just seeing, at least as far as here, how the projected enrollment looks do we have a projected enrollment with the new um, agri-science influx um, because this isn't this is just as it stands now I believe yeah so this is as it stands now without the agri-science if you right I, I think the way they, they laid it out when they, they did their initial discussion of the agri-science for the application I think what you would do is you would take these numbers from 2018-19 school year on and just add 50 or 60 students a year to that total number and, th and that's what you'll get so after four years you'll be you see you'll add 60 the first year you'll add 120 the second year uh, 180 the third year and then 260 the last year right and I think those are conservative numbers I mean the expectation is that we may be able to generate more seats this is fewer than Nottawalk's currently turning away. And we figure that we err on the side of conservatism on those numbers, but we may actually generate more people than Nottawalk's currently turning away once we have a program and, and once they realize for a lot of them in the western part of the state it's closer than if they had to go to all the way to Nottawalk. You know, from St. Yeah. Danbury. Um, so we could we would maybe project perhaps. 10 years having a population around 500 maybe mm -hmm. or close to that which seems at the high school yeah no no uh, all, all told 6, six to 12 you, the, everyone using the, the labs because if we're projecting about 250 it looks like a little under 250 I'm kind of rounding up so oh, I'm sorry yeah I'm looking at the wrong column if you look at appendix E yeah. and you look at the bottom at 24 25 I'm just looking right, at right in the middle high school in, in, in the the, six, the Chapot Valley School, yeah, right. that's right. It's about 500. So if we add another, it would be about 500. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I just want to check out because we want to make sure that it, I know yeah, we had these great sheets that, that, uh, that showed how the um, the curriculum worked in terms of what labs were necessary mm -hmm. to be able to effectively um, teach and expand it, or even a nice full science curriculum. Um, and I want to I want you to um, expound upon that a little bit because. Was it just a matter of planning for the numbers of the curriculum? Was there any resource in terms of what national or state standards are as far as the number of labs you need per population? Well, as, as a matter of fact, 
two basic components to it. One of them was the numbers of students and the numbers of classes that are taking in. The second component was is a, a desire to advance the curriculum. As we become the uh, Chautauqua Valley Agri-Science agri STEM Academy, or Regional Agri-Science STEM Academy, as we proceed to that, uh, one of the things that we really like to see is we really like to see a much better, much more rigorous STEM program here at the school. Uh, we'd like to see more science classes offered. Uh, and as a result, we were, we were some thought was given to, to, if that were the case, with this number of labs work, and, and, and that was part of it. And so I think that you had several pieces to it, both, and also, you know, when you think about it, one of the issues that we're confronting is these labs were designed in 1969 and 1970, uh, and science is a different place than, than it was back then. So we're trying to have some future expansions and increase in the program, the expectation that as we add new areas of study that they're going to require labs, and also, how many labs do we need and if we project the population increase on it from the agro science academy, what uh, what population do we need that came out of the five labs? That seems to be the consensus. Because right. that's what I think is, is essential from the outset. If if we approve this, we have to make sure that we um, we're all engaged together and that we engage our, our public relations forces to make it very clear how this is a a real advantageous, uh, not just advantageous, but necessary expense for the region. Because um, we don't want, you know, there's so much talk about this building was built for a population over twice the size of even the 500 we're, 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 we're expecting. So we don't want anyone to misconstrue the calculations and the, these ed specs so that they will say, well, if four of them were good enough for a, a population of 1,200, why do we need five for 500? We want to make sure that those answers are answered immediately at the outset so that they're not in any way allowed to bubble and filter through a community so we can <coughs> make sure we have support for what may look like, you know, a, a big outlay, but one that is justified. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, that was part of the meat and potatoes of the presentation at our, our last meeting when the administration looked over, right, the curriculum, what the, what the rigors of that <coughs> curriculum um, required, um, what, what hit home was, they're um, uh, putting forward, and I believe our, it's, our, it's our associate principal right, who was talking about um, the need for a lot of flexibility in the scheduling. Applying flexibility in the scheduling allows for more classes to be offered, and that that is a piece that we've already talked to the facilities committee how very important it is. Um, uh, I hear your point, and I, I agree it's not lost. Uh, it not only has to do with population, but it is what is expected from the curriculum. It is the, the flexibility and the scheduling to allow for more classes to go on and for that, that quality of the rest of the education piece to be, uh, to be in place. And uh, I think that was, that was a very strong point that we'll keep putting out there. I just want to say the, the educational specifications, if, if, when you get a chance, if you want to look at the last page, it really is a formality for the state. This is not um, something that you know goes out to the public. Certainly, if somebody wants it, they can see it. But it really is to um, get approved by the board so that this way it can go to the architect and the architect can price out what we need based on the ed specs, and then figure out what the reimbursement rate is, so that when we are ready to go to referendum and start these meetings, we'll have the correct information, and then we'll have everything you talk about, because we're in 100% agreement. But that's not what this is. Okay. This is just really, so what do you mean? for state to yes. funding, uh, state to and for the, the um, architect to get this, get started. Michael? Just to follow up on what um, Alan was saying about um, thinking about communication and how we can communicate this need to the public at large. Um, I'm wondering if timing-wise the NIAS report um, will be helpful to us. In, in other words, I'm assuming that this is going to be a red flag for NIAS Absolutely. that they're going to identify. And I'm thinking that actually in, in many ways that will 
help us right. identify the need. We'll, we'll definitely have it, I would think, by the summer. I would think so. Um, don't you think, Greg? I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. That's not in my control. Right. But six to eight weeks is the um, anticipated. Right. And that would be great to be able to put a couple of quotes from NIAS yes. in there that, you know, really pinpoint the science. Because that's objective. Yes. And the other thing that when we do our little road show, we are, I'm sorry, we're going to take um, pictures, never pictures of our current science lab so that they can see. Exactly the condition. Anyone else? All right. There's a motion on the table then to approve the ed specs for the science labs, which have been presented to us in our materials. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? I have a passage in here, so Thank you. I've checked with the superintendent. There's no need for executive session. Is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, I'll do that. I'd like that. I'd like to report something to the superintendent. I, I recently had occasion uh, under some very trying circumstances to have to acquire some additional technology in my practice. That entirely blew up. The hardware went was completely, the whole thing went nuts, and I desperately needed assistance under the gun on the night before I was leaving for a conference in, in Arizona. And I'm pleased to report that when I got everything solved in beautiful fashion, the person who assisted me was a Chicago graduate. Very nice. Great. 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 Absolutely outstanding job. Nice. All right, is there any motion to adjourn? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Enjoy your evening.